Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. Hi, welcome back to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, welcome and take a look around at our channel. Plenty of content for you to binge. Organized by actor, actress, decade, and director. We start by looking at the wall of my living room. Let's see if I can do it. I intend to be laying down for this movie. <laughs> I can't even see if I'm getting up to the top of my wall, but my house is decorated like that. You partially probably didn't see that. Um, because old movies are important to me for the past 32 years. So why I'm watching Judah Ben-Hur right now is because this is going up on, I don't know if I'm putting it up on Easter Sunday or the Saturday before. And I was just thinking of the tradition of the Ten Commandments. I don't know what markets you guys are in, but I think it doesn't matter about your market, isn't it? It's one of the three majors, and isn't it ABC, I think, every year on Easter Sunday plays the Ten Commandments. And so I just thought, us being in this time frame, I think that Ben-Hur actually, to me, captures more what Easter is about than the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is so far before the birth of Christ, just in the sequence of the Bible. So... Um, we definitely get exposure to the Christ in this movie, and I think that it's more fitting to watch this in honor of Easter. So, um, yeah, I probably, I know that I'm not going to be able to bang this one out in this one fell swoop tonight, because I do have to work in the morning, and I refuse to not sleep enough to be ready to go for my day. So there's no way that I can start watching this movie at the time that it is right now, watch it through to the end and be fresh for work in the morning. So I'm gonna have to accomplish this in two sittings, but we're gonna bang out as much as we can for right now. This movie, most expensive movie ever made up to its point in time, 1959. It was interesting, MGM had taken a stab at doing this movie years earlier. Possibly, I don't think that production on it started at all, but it was either a very, they announced that they were making this movie in 1952. At that point, it was going to be Robert Taylor, and I feel like they said Stuart Granger as the two main characters. Um, they started scouting, they started, you know, revamping, because I guess this is a remake of a movie from 1925, right? This one is directed by William Wyler. Ooh. Wow, gosh, William Wyler is the GOAT, right? Is he not the GOAT of classic film directing? Wow, this is a William Wyler movie. Ooh, that makes a lot of things make sense about how good of a movie this is. Anyway, um, it gets abandoned film. I guess they said something happened, some law happened in 1948 that movie production studios had to dissociate themselves from movie theaters and so that caused a lot of financial distress to MGM. This movie is made by MGM. Leo the Lion is his name. There is some of, I got Louis the Lion from somebody else here on YouTube. That's what the F I get for just being a follower and not a looker upper. As I was going through the research on this right now, they were saying that at the very beginning, we are not going to see Leo the Lion doing his roar because I guess they're saying like this movie starts out on a very sacred scene and they didn't like the mood that it would have created if Leo the Lion would have been roaring right before the scene that will set into. I have never seen this movie from start to finish, so I know I won't even know what this very first scene is. Um, wins a record 11 Oscars. I don't know if any film up to that point had ever won 11 Oscars, but it's best director, best picture, best actor, and best supporting actor, I guess, for the second guy. Um, most expensive movie ever made up until that point of time. They said behind at that point, Gone with the Wind, but also best growth. I don't know if Gone with the Wind was more expensive than that record but it was the fastest and highest grossing movie ever behind gone with the wind um so really just for its time it's the next biggest thing basically saga wise since gone with the wind um let's get started i not like i gotta go but um <laughs> i'm not gonna i can't rush through watching it right but i just know like i've gotta have a cutoff time because 
I refuse to not be fresh for work. So, alrighty then. Um, I've got a run time of really long. Um, actually, I don't have it. my TV set up to be seeing this on the screen. Ways that I suggest that you go about watching these movies with me is everything on one screen. Three hours, 42 minutes, and 27 seconds. I just, I'm not, it's like 7.30. It's closer to 8 o'clock right now. Um, so that'd be like close to midnight that I'd be getting done watching those people. I'm too old to not sleep better than that. Um, watch everything on one screen with me. Okay? If you cannot watch everything on one screen with me, what you have no barrier to access is being able to watch the movie on your phone. I don't have my phone next to me right now, but just following the information that is in the description of my videos, the information about the location of the film is housed over on my sister Pinterest page that I make a board for every movie that we watch. I fill it up with pictures. You do not have to have a previous Pinterest account in order to have access to what I create over on that site, okay? People there really just is, follow what I'm saying to you, access the description of the video, and sometimes you do not have access to the description of the video on a device other than your phone. That's why I'm saying, as long as you have access to your phone, you have access to being able to push play on Ben-Hur with me and watch it from start to finish with no ads and no gimmicks. You can absolutely watch this movie with me. You can watch every single movie on my channel with me, okay? That's the work that I'm doing. So if you need information about that, there is a link in the description of my video that takes you directly over to the Pinterest board that I will have made for this film. And that information about pushing play on the movie is housed right there. And I put it at the very top of the information that you see, okay? So it's very crystal clear. You will be able to push play on the movie. And if you can only do that on your phone, then so be it, okay? But you can still do it. If you have more access, you have access to your tablet or your computer, so you have a bigger device that has access to the description of the video. Start two tabs. This video of me in one tab, the video of the movie in another, make the movie take up more of the screen. Set that up on your tablet or your laptop, vent your desktop, take an HDMI cable from it, plug it into your TV. One screen, your biggest screen. You can do everything wirelessly, it's called casting. You take that same device and cast it to your TV instead of going through an HDMI cable. It's just wireless. Launch the movie, push play on it, get any lag out of the way that sometimes can happen. Pause it, scrub it back to zero. That way you just know the next time you're going to push play it will really start. Back to this video of me, play on TV, picture in picture, that shrinks me, floats me, move me to a small corner of this movie. I would almost say this is required watching people, that you need to be watching Ben-Hur full of screen that you can, and me just with the intended viewing experience for what we're doing on this channel is that I'm just in the small corner of the movie. There is a runtime timer of me showing here in this bottom corner, hour, minute, and second of where the playback of the movie is supposed to be so that we're in perfect sync. Ready? Playing in three, two, one. Click. Oh, so they said that this score was the longest one in film by this point in time. <laughs> All right, so I have cheese and crackers. I am comfy. I'm gonna turn off this light. I have no, we have time in this overture, right? So I'm disconnecting for a second and I'm gonna turn off this light. Oh yeah, so they were saying that the lady that does the, I don't know if it is a lady, but whoever does the costumes for this had like a hundred costumers doing all this stuff. They were like, I feel like they said literally 10,000 extras um, and that for the set work, just all of the statues and getting everything looking authentic had like hundreds of workers creating all of the set design. Um, they said post-production took six months after. I don't know what that is, like, getting all of the location shots. 
Um, and they said, like how I'm saying, I refuse to not be fresh for work. They were shooting 12 to 14 hour days um, straight from 58 until 59. This is released in 59. I feel like they said they wrapped it up in January of 59. So people really, literally, like I have never done a one time sit through of Judah Ben Hur. Isn't I just I like that they call the movie Ben Hur, but as you ever hear him referred to in the movie, it is always Judah Ben Hur. I'm trying to think. You know what? Maybe actually I will recognize the very beginning of it. I just know that I've never sat through it from start to finish in one full swoop setting. And I'm not going to be able to do it right now either. But just with my schedule and stuff, um, to be able to have this up on our channel on time, I need to break it up. And so we're going to have it up on the channel on time. You know what I mean? It's really pretty music. Um, but they literally said, like, this is going to be the longest score in film up to this point in time. And that somehow, you know, it's like really, really influential for the score, as far as that is concerned, for the next 15 years. Well, geez, that's putting it into the 70s. Um, with this being 59, oh, okay, so, like, why it does happen here later in 59 from that first time, that go-round when they were starting to try and do it, it was announced with Robert Taylor they never kind of really did anything with that. Then they did start to try and frame it out. It would have been Marlon Brando. They had hired a producer and a director. Somehow they still went ahead and tabled it. All of that thing that they had to dissociate, TV, they're losing money. And, you know, MGM, by this point in time, it is becoming a thing of the past, right? This feel of the movies. And Paramount had just had all of their success. And I feel like they said 1956 is the Ten Commandments this time of year, right? And they just, they had to, they were probably going for broke, you know what I mean? Because the actual budget of this time for the movie came in at like 15 million people. We know that that's, they said in like this day and age, it'd be like 141 million. So we know that like, they're going for broke. They're pro that's probably like what they had left in the bank, you know what I mean? So they needed to make a return on this investment. But it absolutely pays off. So this is an overture. I'm feeling like this is longer than what we are sitting through for Gone with Wind. Do we have any other movies on this channel than overture? Yes. Um, are we getting to the end of this? It's getting quieter. For whom the bell tolls? actually has a long ass overture home. Huh? Like I was getting real impatient by the time that finally wrapped up. I'm about there right now though, too. Um, with my limited budget of time right now, it's like for real. Um, we get it, you know what I'm saying? Like it is in biblical times. It's really important, it's really deep, it's a thinker. You need to pay attention. And what is this little picture that we're seeing right now? This is the whatever. The, is it the creation or whatever, right? Is this um, <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci, whoever did the Mona Lisa, like whatever, right? It's in Italy. It is really important, okay? And let's, we, can we get started now though too, please? People, do they, do we have to be, like, more, um, civilized in order, do we have to have more class in order to be able <laughs> to, like, not be a problem in the theater about, like, <laughs> people, do you guys talk in the movie theater? Oh my gosh, my mom does. The only movie I've ever seen in the movie theater with her is, um, Jurassic Park, I think the second one. And I could not believe how much her and my sister were talking out loud in the theater. It's, it's just, shut up. You know, don't do that. You are impacting other people's viewing experience in this row with us. Like, wow. But, um, I'm over it. No, for all.
it, I'm like, it was, um, time. Okay, so he's just gonna be silent. Leo the lion, not Louis the lion, he's not even moving, is he? They had to, um, get permission to use this version of him. Okay, let's go. Anno Domini. The hundred years, okay. Okay. Of a messiah? Oh, okay. Okay, so these are good people um, in Jerusalem because we know that there's stories where that's not always what's going on here. Oh, so they all had to come here to report? Aha. Cheese and crackers, people. Uh, I don't recall so far. But there's a scene with the stars. Um, well, uh, ooh. In Lawrence of Arabia, is it in the Ten Commandments too? Whatever. Okay, I haven't seen this before. Actually, now as they just showed it like this, this is seeming familiar. I can guarantee you it's only been one time that I may have seen this part. Mm, mm, mm. They all see that would be really, really creepy and freaky, you would just be like, this far back in time? Because that's not like the International Space Station or anything, you know what I mean? I think you might feel really compelled to go to that spot, right? That's interesting that it's specifically three wise men that do that. People, I'm wise. I'd go to see what that was about. I would go very reverently. I would have sense to take something with me, too. Oh, here they are just now. Okay. But isn't, like, I think that that low number of who's here is very significant, too. Oh, yeah, see, they're acting right. They're old men, wives. There was no room at the end, huh? Do they touch the baby?
They said that, like, really was the whole name of what that 1925 version went by. Somebody Griffith is who won the Best Supporting Actor. We didn't see that person's name yet, though, right? And actually, isn't Stephen Boyd Hugh Griffith is Best Supporting Actor? I was going to say, isn't Stephen Boyd, like, his contemporary, his foe? They didn't have a pop-up picture when they said that name, Griffith. That was the winner of the Oscar. We've seen him. In what? Is he the best years of our lives? Technicolor. Supposedly this widescreen is an MGM effect. I don't feel like they're straight just calling it um, CinemaScope, although that is what it is, but Elizabeth Haffenden. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. He's the producer because he started trying to be the producer of it. Back when Marlon Brando was supposed to do it, a few years back. Okay, so when they were saying that, they said everybody was ordered to come to report, leave their lands and come to report, but then they were there at that table collecting that information in Jerusalem. So that's where everybody from just everywhere around had to come to, to Jerusalem there to do that reporting. Or now they can go back to their wherever they were living. Or this is the Romans coming through. They already occupy this, control it. Is it a threat? Yeah, I mean, it's like, why are they rolling through so deep like this? What's going on? What's newly happening here? Okay, so yeah, these are the Romans that are coming from Rome. Going to Jerusalem. So that's like the capital of this territory that they control. Oh, Joseph gets it. Good on you, Joseph. Dude doesn't, but you know. Mind your business. You know, I think I'd mind my business, for. Why are so many of them coming to Jerusalem right now? For. You know, like, they don't be respecting what the natives here do in, Jer in Jerusalem. It seemed like they said they let them still worship in their own way, right? But why would they be coming here all deep like this? Is this that fool already that's going to be a problem for Judah ben -Hur? He's in position, right? He's in some position of authority. He's new, coming to his spot. Is he coming to take over? 
Aha! Uh -huh. That's what it is. He's relieving this dude. Who is that old man? You've seen him in things. Okay. So he's new here. What? Is the come up? This is the glow up for you? Okay. Well, are you about to, like, be horrible about this? I mean, okay. I mean, it didn't. It's all about him, right? For sure. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't. He has no reverence for it. He has no respect for it. It is his, right? It's his. He can do what he wants with it. long time to live somewhere. Mm. Is that what he is now? Yeah. Oh, he's... Was he gone? It's his responsibility now. What? Well, fear? Oh. Is he the... The governor? Okay, I mean, he has a major little attitude about that. I was like, yes, Tribune. <laughs> So he's, okay, he's got a, a strategy. He's just got to reconnect with his brother from childhood, then change his mind, and then he knows due to Ben-Hur can impact all of it. Don't they just throw little things at each other from this far away? This dude is weird, um, because you know he's coming back thinking that this whole thing is his. We already got that. Okay, I thought they did. They were going to do it together. 
I'm gonna do whatever he wants with it. It's all about him. But that's a weird respect that he said to show to Judah. They're on different sides of things now, though, huh? Okay. Why did he leave to go be um, with the Romans? Is he Roman? Of uh, that dude right there? She can marry him? Is it not a problem that this fool is like the Roman governor now to marry his sister when Judah's like a prince of this? Judah been her the twelve. Is it of Joseph? The twelve tribes, right? It's the twelve tribes. And Judah's one of them, so he was a prince before this territory got occupied by the Romans. And so that being the case with their history, then Judah was always royalty compared to this boy. But his dad was the governor when th their star-crossed friends, huh? They're just little boys that got along that didn't allow like segregation or you know what I mean or prejudices to influence their obvious kindred spirits towards one another right like they have the same interests they got the same talents they were just from different paths okay yeah you okay that hesitation like you know that that's not quite a true statement yeah, and you guys have just gone higher and higher. Oh, how? Uh, okay, yeah. We don't want to be governed, huh? Yeah, go away. I. Look at him. Is it already going to fall apart for them right in this little moment right here? It needs to be decorated, right? It needs a woman's touch. Oh, um, that's what makes it Roman. Okay, second in command. Oh, okay. Uh oh, is that why? Is that, okay. What are the rumors? Like they're doubling down. Um, he does not approve of your country. Wise. And he's second in command of the Romans here.
tell them to obey us. People, moments in the moment it is required for you to stand your cause, you know, stand around, speak to it. Judah. Okay, are you gonna drink to it, Judah? Oh, okay. So person to person. That's really, this is an interesting dynamic, right? It really just is, these boys are from different backgrounds and it is cool. It's like, Judah is now the head of what he's about and this dude is second in command of what he's about, but they are the opposing forces. This, I remember that okay that's what matters they used to on purpose throw things at people from the roof oh my gosh I said the best years of our lives <laughs> That's a pretty name on tears of. Oh, they don't, they're not impressed by that. Oh. He's offending them, huh? They didn't hide their offense. That's interesting to see these ladies in the beginning. They're, they are rich. Uh, he's the richest family in this territory. Where does the Arabian? Oh. He looks like the sundowner. too much to believe it. You don't believe that. Has he had time to say, oh, you already have. Well, he's not able to control everybody. Oh. He needs exact names. Judah. Okay. Hmm. 
why doesn't Judas speak more back to this fool? Okay, well it is for you, fool. Seraph, right? Yeah. Ooh, I was thinking that because I was about to say God is watching everything that's going on right now. Full, not that emperor over in Rome is watching this right here. Except, all right. I don't know that's right, Judah. They're his people, full. Mm hmm the emperor okay y'all are getting more down to it no um no way no way Okay, Judah, you know what it all entails. Okay. That's interesting, though, because Judah's not about an army. He's not about a military. He's about a belief. He's about his religion. He's about just being... A rich man and obviously like a good man to his community. So what kind of battle could they be going to right now? You know what I mean? Oh no, not they. He won't be coming back. Huh? That's supposed to be her husband. Huh? Just don't press him. Huh? The, I, it is so cool seeing his mom like this. Boy, we don't see them in this wealth for long. In this four hour long movie. Just, I'm not spoiling anything, but take it in with your observing of them right now. Oh, uh, okay, we'll tell her, yeah. Tuesday will be on board right away, right? Look at they're eating off of pure gold. Hmm. So that's interesting, like, whatever Judah Ben-Hur is about, even though he lives in an occupied territory or whatever, like, he's still able to do really well, despite that. This whole thing right here is his house. Okay, is that full? We're little rascals back in the day. We used to, on purpose, stand up on top of these roofs and throw rocks down on people.
what's up with his dad? Dude, his dad. Judah is really over all of this. Oh, Esther. So from that far away, he sees Esther all covered up like this and I was already saying whatever dude is about. This dude goes out and does like scouting for him and needs to come back and he just negotiated something with a different territory about them doing business. But it's like to Judah's benefit. permission to get married like why do you need to come and you're you don't want to get married why are you gonna come and speak to judah oh the way he's sitting there too i don't i don't like he was a little bit too laid back <laughs> he was looking lower than this oh, okay yeah see esther don't need to be saying nothing to judah if she's trying to get married it is her father's wish in there though. This is not appropriate. Okay, I thought, yeah, I thought he was just saying that she didn't, she didn't need to be a slave and stuff. And he already granted that she could get married. They do not need to be talking to each other right now. And he don't need to be perched in this chair the way that he is and looking at her. We, well, well, um, what is going on? she does or not damn you know, some man is not looking at you like this sitting like that without you needing to be just what in the world is going okay <laughs> this is the creepiest um and most inappropriate granting permission for people to be going on their way to get married you said that's if any man was looking at you like that that is a reportable offense if that was happening to you in your workplace and you were skeeved out by that please understand that you can go report that the place that i'm working right now i just had to do their training and they labeled sexual harassment as staring okay She's been all up and through it, through her life as his slave. Right. Oh, when Judah was looking at some other girl. But they teased her. He didn't know. Why does she have to have such an accent in this movie? Like, her accent really bothers me. His mother and sister don't have. Oh, uh, he, he remembers it too. Oh, he already said, yeah. Oh, she wants to keep calling him that. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, she doesn't want... Okay. I was going to say, did he say the wise old days? They're not living like that anymore. Um, David and Bathsheba. <clears throat> Why is that movie called David and Bathsheba? But, um, was he Solomon in that movie? Okay, well, but you fool, you, she is because you gave her her freedom and you told her that she could get married to you guys um oh he's taking it all he's gonna keep it does it fit on his pinky always Oh, even after that, you know what, um, why is this so blatantly, um, disturbing? Oh, uh, you know what, okay, y'all, it's lot, like, let's don't keep it an elephant in the room, because it is so inappropriate, so just dive in. Well, Esther... I like that you didn't jump back all on him for the second. <laughs> she's a good girl, Judah. Why doesn't he just say that she's his wife then? Okay, like... He respects her dad. Why can't Judah marry her? That's the come up for her. Her dad wouldn't be mad if Judah said that he decided she's his wife. Change of plans. Has he been feeling Esther all along or just, that was too much. I didn't, it didn't work for me. That was too creepy. That, it was, there was too much energy in that, you know what I mean? It was, Whatever, we got it established. Like, obviously, they're going to have um, problems keeping it appropriate. Oh, this is the governor. And again, this is all his. This is Mythologius, this is whatever his name is, right? <clears throat> okay. Because uh, they're not happy that you're here, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's already his first failing. And he just called him Tribune, too. Like, is that all that he's ever going to call that fool? Like, he's... What is that fool's name? Mythologiasis. Or so, it's too long. Uh, <laughs> but... You could tell that dude, the governor, was not pleased that there were not the enslaved and captured people there to show their forced appreciation of him coming through. Because <clears throat> until today, it has been that other dude's territory, right? Now he's got to hand it off to the governor, and he already effed up. Oh, yeah, that's the welcome and the reception for And this is obviously just coming down through generations because it's been like this since those two were boys. He said at some point it was explained his dad was, okay, Masala. Tika Masala. That's how I'm going to remember that whole name. Um, his dad was the governor until he was 14. Okay. Well, he didn't acknowledge him. <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, a lot of that is 
is gonna fall down. Damn. Y'all's house is in ill repair. She, like, this much of that is gonna fall down. Damn, that's the egregiousness of the offense then. Oh, and here she comes again. Oh, it's gonna hit the governor? He's alive still, right? <clears throat> oh, they're coming right away. They know where that came from. Um, I mean, what's the condition of the governor? He's an old dude. Um, like, it might be the end of him. And leave it to me, Scarlet. Whatever happens, leave it to me. So she gotta leave it to Judah. Oh, damn. They all just got arrested immediately. Everybody up in this household. That's Masala? No. That's not. <clears throat> it is a bit extreme to be thinking that it would have been the women but they're snatching them up anyway um I guess no love there's no credit for the boy friends that they were is it gonna just be like a robot take him to one thing about Charlton Heston is he's got a his mouthpiece is just a part of the performance right I mean he's just got a really strong jaw and teeth right I mean he banks on that in his performances like he works with his jaw a lot I it's not a read I'm not trying to be comical or anything but it is something to just you have to acknowledge I feel like it's kind of probably the most... Is this his biggest movie, people? He has a really big career, though. He has a lot of big movies. He's in the big country. Why did he do that movie? He already was big by the time of big country to take that kind of second role to Gregory Peck. He deliberately did that. Because the big country's in 57, I think. Oh, this fool knows the history of, um, on purpose, back in the day, he can totally see how that fell down. They used to throw rocks from there. They didn't. Judah's not for him, though, right? That's the only point to this. Where did they put the women? I, f I was talking over that. Didn't he say, like, it's not really that big of a deal? Oh, he's already in here. Oh. This is due? Oh, it's like a fire far away. Territory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> you know, I was going to, I should have said, what are they tying his hands with? And, you know, Judah could probably 
They didn't have handcuffs, huh? Oh, now they've put a stake on to him about it. He's fighting for his life wherever Tyrus is. He said to die in the galleys. Isn't it? When he just says the galleys, to me, that is giving me the underneath of a boat of a ship. And we see him do that next. So that's what he's... Tyrus means that he just has to go work on... Look at him still! Corona! Um, dude, where the fuck are you going with your arms all bound up like that? He knows his way through this thing. Oh, see, this person can get whacked. What do they plan? It's fighting for his life. Damn, Judah! It's all about Judah right now, though, too. Uh, this ain't about nobody, none of his people or nothing. He's trying to find where his mom and sister are. He's not going home. He's going to run away, though, he has to. Does he know his way through this thing? There's people down there. This is where him and dude threw the thing. Oh, he, know, he can't make it that far. Is he about to throw a spear on them? Treat him like a prince, Masala. Okay, oh, do I put it down? Oh, okay. Well, just tell him. Well, that lady was about to be your wife. Okay, you about to read him for filth? Mm -hmm. He's become a robot. Okay. I know that the tiles were loose. Because they fell when I went up to inspect him. Is he going to tell him that? <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Well, it's all about him. Well, did you, though? Or, like, where you kept trying to command him? Like, he's not a man. Well, he's not gonna do it, Paul. You just said... to return well I'm saying like damn Jada okay <laughs> that, Charlton Heston like that jaw was the last part of the screen of him wow 
Um, so he's not supposed to ever be able to return. What is this Tyrus part? Like, to me, that's sounding like a territory. But he said he's, um, you know, subjected to have to go, what did he say, die on the galleys? That's working, and that's what we're going to see him doing. <clears throat> Why on earth is the Tribune seeing these people? That's weird huh, that he's granting them an audience. This is Masala. Is seeing, because he knows this dude is like Judah's number one man, right hand man, be out doing the scouting work for him. It's weird that he's seeing them, huh? This dude is really, he's, is he, who is he from? Um, Bedknobs and Broomsticks. Why, I, why, what is her accent supposed to be? It is exceptionally distracting. Oh, do they need to go? Well, what about Esther? He's become like a robot. He's definitely power hungry. He's on the come up, the glow up. The emperor sees everything that's going on. Saw that moment that him and Judah were talking. And the next stop for him, if he don't fuck it up right here, is to be doing all of this over in Rome. Right? Like that's the better, best place to be able to do it. Well, that's kind of stupid. Like, why? If Rome is supposed to be trying to conquer the world and shit, like, why would it be the best station to be doing whatever you do in Rome? Is it just, like, D.C. to be, you know, governing the country or whatever? Okay, so wherever he's going to, wow. He has to go through the desert first to get there. Is this him? Is that Judah? Or that's just somebody that is not going a step further. Not all of them have footwear, huh? Yeah, that man's feet were bleeding, huh? He's gonna see Jesus right now, right? Is this the scene? Yes. Because he's doing his work. In the carpenter shop. None for them. Was Judah praying right there? Good gosh, people, I mean, you need like eight glasses of water a day just to do your living in life right now. These people are going through the Sahara Desert and being denied water. This old lady is giving them water. Are they going to get in trouble? Oh, definitely none for him ever.
this is one of the best movies we've seen. Oh my goodness. They said there's some ship battle scene that was done in some huge water tank. But, like, I guess on set, on the studio lot at MGM, but it, like, still had to be this really huge set. People, I am a child of God, believe in God, love God, praise God, and that was just one of the most intense things. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? Like, I couldn't even speak because it was interesting. It's like whenever you're out in really hot, bright light, right? Like, if you don't have sunglasses, some type of eye protection, looking up, would he have even been able to make out any distinguishable features? But you could tell that immediately when he looked up, he saw the face of God. And then... Later, he just really got to take him in. That's, oh my goodness. Right? This is the galley that he's talking about. This is his end destination, right? Judah. A new commander of the Romans. What? So he has to just go be, is, is this a fighting ship for the Romans? That he has to be in the galley of? But they switch them out. 30 people an hour gets to switch out. He's coming to examine them. Like, they have to be in fit enough condition, right? Like, they can't be, like, I'm gonna, my people being brought over here chained up. They can't be in that type of shape, right? They have to be able to be doing this. So he's examining them, right? Is that Judah? It doesn't quite... Uh, that probably isn't him, right? They show his face more. So this is just Judah's fate, right? I'm not supposed to be able to come back from this. Okay. But he's not supposed to last that long. Did that man said to him before? Okay. But you think they don't know that? Oh, you know what? I was like, why is the light all of a sudden what it is on the screen? It's because my computer <laughs> does this. Um, I have a night light set to do what it does at 9 o'clock, and that's what time it is. I maybe have an hour left. Maybe not quite. We'll see. I have to be good to be disciplined.
why do they keep saying galleys? So, a uh, what? What are these ships gonna take over? And now they go around attacking people? What the F did he just say? He said a thing of galleys has been going around and attacking. Macedonian galleys has been going around and attacking. But why do they call this galleys? Like, that is the part that they're, oh, this fool really just, this is his job. But it doesn't, they're not in battle, so it doesn't need to be battle speed. He's just checking for Judah. Why? What does he know about Judah's story? To be checking for him this hard. Jeez Louise. I mean, these men bring it all the way back. Oh. Um, why? Why is he needing to see them perform like this? And he's only checking for Judah. Well, I guess he looked around right there. No, oh, some are not going to be able to keep it going, huh? He's going to lose some right here. Because obviously, like, they keep him alive, but just barely in. Well, this is the total manpower of their ships when they're in battle. Is there something beyond this speed? So this dude is like the, um, leading an orchestra, like, do you really have to, what is this dude called? Do you really have to pay attention to him in order to play the, um, symphony? The dude with the stick, do you really have to be paying attention to him? But, I mean, and this dude on the drum right now, like, has he really, I guess he has picked it up quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, this is. I mean, is it? <laughs> okay, dude. What's this for? Why are you losing your crew right now for no necessary reason? Y'all are not in battle right now. He just needs to see what they can do if they were. And they don't get to have water or anything to recuperate, right? No Gatorade. Does this dude right here end up giving Judah his freedom? I have it, people. So I, like I said, I don't know all the bits and pieces, the intricacies of this movie. I, f I don't know. I feel like one time on Turner Classic... I caught it from the beginning there, although that cool star in a way was familiar and was, I guess like at a part when it was moving in the sky was familiar, but then when it just was stopped, it was just too cool to me. If I had seen that before, I mean, I didn't really remember it. Okay, Jota, what, what, what are you doing? Boy, Charlton Heston just had to be in shape, huh? throughout his career. I mean, he's given any of these fools and nowadays a run for their money, huh? Because it wasn't nobody's body needing to be ripped like this back in the day. The way that, like, the Aquaman and that one dude from Hemsworth from Australia, right? They're always focusing on his body. Nowadays. Oh, um, watch your mouth. Is Judah gonna correct him on that? He 
he might help him. A full why do you sound like you're from proper England? Or when you're supposed to be serving Rome back in the day. He couldn't have checked his accent a little bit. Or you gotta project your non-beliefs onto everybody around you? You just asked a question. I mean, you seem to be spreading your little gospel and he didn't have an answer for that? Oh, he's thinking about it right now. And this is the battle scene that they're talking about. They said this was filmed in just a tank when using miniature ships, right? But it was still a huge tank. Well, I might actually just find myself sitting here throughout this whole fucking movie <laughs> and I'll be mad about it in the morning, but... It might need to happen. <clears throat> oh, they do chain them. Damn. And so it's going to get up to battle speed. It'll be. And they will start to lose the ability to keep up and they'll just be chained to their spot. This is horrific, right? So he's going to be the only one that's unchained. He just told Judah that he would help him like that. But he didn't. He said that he could help him, but he didn't tell him that. He just talked shit to him that he was going to be chained up. Judah, you know you notice that nobody else is unchained. Oh, he ain't really so... All of his people right now, everybody is not here in Judea right now. Well, Judah, you're the only one right now. I mean, he's rolling with it, right? Don't show his feet again. I don't need to see that. Are guys feet people? I mean, like, they looked pedicured or whatever, but I still do not want to see that again. Do these look like little miniature ships? They look pretty good at weird huh? like why do they have to have the row 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 your boaters when we get to um pirates of the caribbean and they're using sails that's why they don't have sails huh? because in the pirates of the caribbean nobody is having to do this to row the boat they use sails and they just have that turning wheel huh? is that still how they're steering right now 
or no. I mean, do these guys have to row it in the direction they say? The evolution of ships, I guess, right? I mean, there actually are sails on this thing. They just don't have it down. It's kind of really stupid to me that this has to be a part of this boat. I mean, obviously with all of these oars sticking out of the side, it limits how close you can get. I'm serious, is the purpose of these men rowing the boat solely for um, punishment? Because right away, Judah knew when they said Tyrus, he was like, condemned, isn't that what he said? Condemned to die in the galleys? Like, he, that's, they're not supposed to leave, they're not supposed to survive. They don't get fed properly, they get sick, they get rammed, okay, and they're chained. You know what, I mean, it's like interesting that the people that were around him, that saw him get unchained, I mean, it was actually really sad, um, the way that man said it next to him, he was like, 41, why, did he say, why you, why you, 41? It was all sad. Well, this is just an interesting experience, right? Like, they first try to set each other on fire, and they did, right? Judah, why did you have your arm around that man's neck like that? What was that for? That looked like one of his fellow rowers. That was somebody that had a key. That, that was somebody that had a key. He just took away the key from somebody to undo the chains. Okay, damn, now that is a problem for them down the below. Ugh. Um, those were people even down beneath them. Okay, so that man did give Judah his freedom only to the extent of unchaining him, right? Or does that man survive and Judah survives and they still stay connected? Judah, you need to get a weapon quick. Okay. that old man in the middle of all this going to be able to tell that Judah just saved him? Oh. Judah's going to save him by jumping in the water for him? Or is just Judah being smart and getting the F out of Dodge off of that boat? No, okay, he grabbed up this dude. That dude would drown him with all of that stuff on him. And Judah's feeling this obligation to help this man because he unchained him. Huh? Okay. I really am asking these questions I didn't remember. So, this dude said he was rich. What did he say? He said he had all kinds of slaves and shit. Someplace else.
Oh. He's supposed to do that, huh? If... That's interesting. Uh, Mark, is it Mark Antony from Cleopatra? Oh, yeah. He really, really messes up because... He totally jumps off of their ship. Abandons his whole entire ship full of people. Just because Cleopatra left him. But that's interesting because that man, it seems like that was an obligation that they have as, as long as they don't go down with their ship. And Mark Anthony wasn't thinking nothing about doing that to himself. He was just a little bitch. Living all in solitude in the dark and stuff. He was ashamed of himself, but he wasn't trying to do that. Oh, Judah, you got him turned up. Cause you saved me. Okay. This dude's stripping really hard. At. It's like, um, what are you trying to do? Is he still trying to get to his little? Is it a sky the scathe or whatever? Right? A little teeny tiny knife. I need them to stop showing his feet. Okay, see? Why do they only call him Ben Hurt then? In the title of the movie. <laughs> oh, is he, does he have to row it out now though? Like he's gonna row them to wherever they're gonna get to from here? <laughs> what do they say? Is it a, the opposition? So stand up and make yourself seen. I'm, why does this man have such an unnecessarily strong English accent? Esther has an accent that is just where in the fuck is she supposed to be from? But this man right here, um, he needed to not keep the accent. English people can change their little accent as actors. I just almost bit my tongue. They can change their accent as actors. Um, this, this is an F. Like, an, I don't know how to do that with my hand, but it's an F. I wonder if this is the dude that wins the um, Best Supporting Actor. Who has been the supporting actor so far? If it isn't Tika Masala. But I feel like that dude's name is Boyd. Oh, is he giving Judah his freedom? No. <clears throat> oh, damn, it's like that. Judah gets it first. Um, why did Adios give his little report about how all the ships were lost and five galleys and shit, but, um, still the battle was won? Like, what other ships were, it didn't have nothing to do with him, but he gets the credit for it. Oh, 
Oh, is Judah gonna be like at his right hand now? Judah gets to come up into Rome and get some type of an appointment that um, Masala doesn't have a say about. What the F is going on? Like, is the Roman Empire so big that um, the beef that Masala has with Judah is going to not be known here? They're in Rome now. Huh? They're coming into Rome. This is this full. Yes driving his chariot and there's been her with him but this is in rome so judah is about to get some type of an appointment in their little empire that's gonna put him at the same level or above masala tika masala do you guys get that when you do indian food yum this is the only thing i've ever tried Gotta have it though. It is so good. I do that in the non. Now nah, that's how you say it, right? Non. Oh, you know what? Okay, I'll tell you why I ever tried it. Um, I love Hawaii Five O. They were tearing up Steve and in his sidekick, whatever that dude's name was. They were on assignment on stakeout, and Steve said they needed to order Indian food. And then when they got it, like the other dude had never had any of it. And there was some type of, um, like, mango jelly. It's not what it was, but it was, you know what I mean? And he was like, you got to take your chicken, put it on the naan, take the mango stuff, too. It's like jelly, but it's not. And then the rice, <laughs> take a bite of it like that, because he wasn't eating it right. And I was like, I have got to get all of that. And if I just get each little, because they were very specific about what they were eating. And I have had it like that. It's delicious. It varies from restaurant to restaurant, but um, it's delicious. Not every place has that mango stuff. Is this the whole entire, is this Caesar? Well, this is how important this dude was. Wow, this is the all-knowing emperor. Oh. Does the emperor know that? Okay, this section of this movie, I have not paid attention to the details of. That's why I'm tripping to be, I'm seriously asking these questions. I li literally, people, I am asking. I am not spoiling. So, okay, this is Caesar. It's from Tikka Masala. But he didn't attack him. Oh, is he the royal S? Who's S? Uh -huh. And he set him free. Oh, they vote on it as a senate. It's not just his say. interesting that in these um, times and in their entertainment they often do show African parties um, because yes we have representation back in this time too right he was talking about he got that thing for Tirza in Libya
Oh, you know what I was confusing that with? I was like, why did um, that already exist? But I'm thinking of Liberia, which was created for our freedom, right? Where we could come back to the homeland and be free. Not Libya. The only time that I learned about Africa was in French class in high school. We had our French teacher was from France. And you know how many African countries speak French? He was calling us little pieces of shit that we were Americans and we were never going to learn about Africa. And he made us have to learn all of these countries of Africa and their capitals to fill it out on the map. Oh, so that's what he does now. <gasps> that's why. Okay. I have not seen this part of this movie. Hmm. Did I didn't know that already before just right now that he told everybody? There's like a really important race. Oh, he's just adopted him. Judah didn't know that. Well, why are you giving this time already? Like, why is not what he gets when you pass away? Like, what's happening to you? Where are you going? This is weird. Like, Judah didn't know that he was in the process of being adopted. <laughs> he didn't get a say about that. Yeah, you know, it is really weird where he is right now. What had ever happened to his father? You already heard me asking that two hours ago. His dad was establishedly not there anymore. He was really the head of the whole little territory. He made a really great on the spot speech due to town. And he has no problem with public speaking. And it was very heartfelt and well thought out. I need some water. Um, oh, all right. Well. Oh. Okay. If Pontius Pilot is just gonna have an attitude about everything, he's gonna read for filth the whole time, and he's gonna be a traitor. Just let it go for tonight is what he told him. So, how long has Judah been here now? And you can tell he thinks about going home, but he's not actually, like, implementing going home. Oh. Um, he can do that. Okay. Uh, take a missile and we'll be there. So that's why he's just trying to go now. So it's only been months. Well, Judah, I mean, was he going to let you go before? Why does it need to? He'd say no, Judah.
but it's not my home. So Judah didn't wait until Pontius Pilate. Goes over there, right? Because he'll be coming through with um, a legion, and this is just Judah going. Okay, well, okay, I was okay. See, I don't know this. I thought we were gonna see Judah on the horses and shit because he was about to be in a race for that man. But that's just what he's done for a long time. He did it for. He, I felt like this fool said that he did that for him for five years, and he always won. Or did he just say five races? And he always beat everybody. And punch, even punches pilots the horses. Who's checking for him so hard right now? Who's this old dude? Um, Esther. Who's from like Portugal or some shit? You know what I mean? Like her accent, like I already said, is distracting. But we have not had to hear it for a long time now. Is this old dude just gonna be the next thing we see? <laughs> How on earth does he recognize? Or do they know each other? Is, was he from there? He was from Judea. Jerusalem. Oh, don't get it twisted. No, he ain't the one. Does he keep it to himself? Spread the word, dude. Judah, is that where you were when you got your water? Okay. So those are his children. children i love the people you know how much i love the horses and the best line about horses that we have heard in life was from jubal when that man said that horses are better than most people that is the reason why i love the horses so much they are so pristine genteel angels on earth and of course they're so beautiful and majestic but yeah, those are his children. They're gonna run the way that they want to, and they of course can run. I he hit them again. Oh, because Ben Hur knows how to do this. He's been doing it for a long time. They didn't want to turn him. He needs a horse whisperer to help them make the turn. <laughs> he said that he's gonna take every drop of blood of that man out of him if he hit those horses again and he did hit them i well fool you can do it you can make them run the way you want them to <laughs> yeah all right well why is he having him do that anyway then What are they for? Well, hold, you don't know tactics like that? In um, Rome? Does he know about him? 
in the um, call zoom. When is his little race that he's trying to get them ready for? Oh, that's cool. Are they going to eat? What's the way that you're supposed to do it? It's just certain fingers. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's a trip of how. Okay. What are you trying to do, dude? What's your deal? enough to feed the needy a biggie 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 smalls what's his name biggie smalls the notorious big oh he's got a bird what is biggie's line he's not only um <laughs> Oh, his little horses. Oh, he calls his children and they come into his town. That's all he had to do. Well, here they come. They are his children, dude. They come if they want to. They're like cats. But he they absolutely understand him calling them right now. You know they only come if they want to. This dude's got it figured out with the horses. Up. Oh. Huh? <laughs> Is it a girl? Okay, see, he's telling them they need their rest. I'm going to have to do this in two sittings, people. Where is this happening? Where is this happening?
Why is Masala writing for the Circus Tribune? Okay. Give for the people that he has betrayed. Well, is it where he's going? Blasphemous. Yeah, read him for filth. Oh, he was one of the three whites. man is talking to Judah. Judah, you're getting that? Don't be stiff-necked on that. Um, I didn't realize that he was hell-bent on that type of retribution on Masala. That's, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, that's interesting because he has had a really drastic change of his circumstances. He doesn't believe in miracles. Well, like, you're exactly, you're a living example of miracles. Oh. Hmm. Like, forever or just tonight? Judah's um, mission and purpose right now. I thought it was more. Wow, people said, did we miss the bulletin? We missed the memo? He is hell-bent on getting back to Judea right now. I thought it was to go find his mom and sister. I didn't think that had shit to do with Masala. So he can't stop heading back there. He got all perked up when he heard about Masala. But he has to deal with him in his own way. Alright, here he is back home now. This place is all abandoned, condemned. So, okay, all right, where was this old man telling Judah that the horse race was here? Because he said that um, Masala is riding for the circus. Why would he do that? Masala has stopped being second in command of Judea, and he just works for the circus. No, <laughs> that's what he said. He rides for the circus. Where are the races? Here, I would imagine, right? I, I'm confused now. Oh, does this open the door? It's like his little... People, why did that happen? to do with old dude from bed knobs and broomsticks with his little afro his afro is epic um he got put in jail too and I kept asking what about Esther Esther was here on her herself Esther you heard something up in this shit by yourself and you coming out I don't know you better have a stick a knife a rock oh she didn't hear now she just senses 
the fuck is she doing coming to water these? This looks like she got a, a water canister for plants. Does she know somebody's in here? Did she ever get married? Supposed to get married? You have not been a slave. You have not been. You're not straight off of the galleys. Why are you looking like this? You walked through the desert. Yeah, where is. Okay, yeah. So, why are you here? Who are you with? Did you get married? Um. Do you know right now, Mister? Oh, okay. Looking like a refugee, but he does not need to. Do you know, like, Judah, what? I need to understand why he's dressed like this right now, though. He did not walk through the desert back home. He was coming with all of this shit that this man gave to him, and he looks like a fucking refugee right now. <laughs> he does not need to be looking like this. Is he just going to restore this house right now? Yeah, I mean, Judah, you were not all ragged. Yeah. yeah, he looks just like he did when you came to report to him, huh? So Esther didn't get married. What's the matter? So is he gonna go do this horse race now? Esther, no. Does she know right now? The old man is not lying to him. Does it count? Yeah. Okay. Well, 
he doesn't, I don't need it. He loves more than that now. He came with that. Okay. Does this girl already know where they are? Okay, well... <clears throat> I mean, you don't have to freak out right now, dude. Like, now is not the time to freak out like that. Um, he picked him up really easily. You guys, Pillow Talk, the very end, when Rock Hudson is carrying her for so long, they built a little platform that she was sitting on, and so she was strapped on him. That's what that looked like just now, unless he just picked him up like that. Yeah, when it was totally inappropriate that you guys did for what it was supposed to be about. Oh, he's still, still rocking your ring, girl. you kissed her anyway though dude hard there'd be no goodbyes to say and y'all kissed anyway okay it didn't matter before either Do we see them get married in this movie? Like, they're betrothed, obviously, but do they get married? Is he going to put the ring back on her finger? It was her slavery ring. She don't want that back. Well, well, because you kissed her right before all of that shit went down. You thought he was married, Esther? What's she all scared about? Does she know? What is another saying? Masala. Is his name Masala? Don't. Oh. Well. Okay. So. Okay, she was saying, that's what she, does he need to know that you're here?
<clears throat> okay, what's happening next? I mean, like, just we need to know. Right? Okay, there's this fault, right? This, he's just drinking wine during the day. This is him doing his work. Is this the governor with him? That's how he does his horses? Do you like your shit? Oh. <laughs> is he, oh, he's, I'm like, is he explaining shit to him what all this is? It's more than anything that you're aspiring to, dude. hand unsheathed now too oh no well he's probably not oh. I cannot believe this fool hasn't excused himself <clears throat> well, he ain't the governor for very much longer. Oh, that's all the time that he's giving him. Oh, really? We need music as he walks out. Oh, we didn't get any. Music was called for right there. Is he scared? Like, why did he, um... He gives a fuck right now whether or not they are alive. Oh, this is him? No. This is really gross. Okay, so, well, like, they are trackable and shit, but how well... See, this is even obviously way worse than being in that galley shit. They said in, they were reading those fools for, we keep you alive, but very bare minimally, so you can row. Bitch will be chained and go down with the ship if it sinks. And you'll get sick, and we'll toss you overboard in that way. But we have to feed you, give you water and shit. They keep people inside of this all filthy like this. Like, I mean, they know exactly what cell they're in. But how horrifically they have been keeping them. 
leprosy, right? People see my member site. You can do any title over there, $2 to rent it for 30 days. The nun story. But they've caught leprosy from how badly you guys have them in these living conditions. Wait, that's a real thing. Is it still a thing, people? But, um, like, it was a real thing in this time. Grow? So they are lepers now because this is the living condition that they're in. I think, does it have to do with all this darkness and moisture? That happened to them, right? Like, it's a catchable thing. The nun story, there was a priest that, just on purpose, he stayed in the leper um, colony with people. And for the longest time, he never got it, but then he finally did. It is contagious. Um, but, like, they've been locked in that, so that's how they caught it. They said for three years nobody had come to check on them. They knew they were alive because the food disappears. Okay, why are we back here? They just let them out? They didn't see to where they were sent to. They were just releasing that out into society? their disease. I thought that they, um, I didn't imagine to say, like, they have to go to the colony and we'll burn out the, um, cell. I guess he said we're just gonna release them out onto the streets. There's a, or what's her name, Esther? Just be walking through this place in the dark like this, unarmed and be telling people are there. This is turning into a bad horror flick. Is she gonna walk toward it? Okay. She recognized her voice right away. I was wondering, like, she's not going to see them for a while, but she can already tell it's them. Can she see them? Well, it's a different day, obviously. I think you can see me. I can't see it very well. This is a very dark scene. I have a dark room setting. Is that Tirza? Bright room. Is that what I've got going on here? A bright room. Yeah, he's back, huh? Just yesterday, uh, that's why they're here. Oh, he's right there, right there. Where are they going to be able to go? Like, they can't... Okay. That's messed up. That they didn't send them there. Because that's contagion in the community. And they obviously don't care. They being the Romans. Because it's not their land. Uh, though they have to live there too. That's bizarre, huh? Is that Judah? Why is he always wrapped up like this? I thought you saw him.
Oh, okay. Oh, is he handsomer to you, Esther? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, have that out. He out in the open about that to his mom. She don't care at all. Does she welcome? Does she want to ever leave him? Or is she... He's going to be searching for the rest of his life and in vain. Am I up as loud as I can go right now? It got softer. Yeah, it is. They look so different, right? Like, even just right here, it's not the illness part of it, but, um, it's hard to remember, and I think, like, if you didn't ever catch the movie all the way from the very beginning, how, how rich they were. Um, the mom, like, her costumery was just very flowy, rich-looking. Her hair was all done. Is she walking? She said, wait, well... People, if it's not, like, pitch black in your room... It's hard to see the screen right now. I have to have my light on to record. That's kind of messing me up right now. Esther always, every single moment though, Esther always looks like this. Anything Judah Ben Hur is saying to her, you know, it's like Esther. Um, you need a, the, she needs a chill pill. Oh, he's back. Masala Tika. Masala. Oh. So Esther's just gonna tell a blatant lie right now? But she's going to say she saw them dead a long time ago. She just hasn't told him yet. Yeah, Esther, you're a bad liar. Oh, uh, yeah, not if they're not here anymore. Okay, is he going? to get into this race now. That's interesting. Like, if he was hell-bent on taking him out, why is he just going to go do that to this fool? He ain't going to do it through this race. Um, like, Judah right now, if his mom and sister in his mind are no longer here, he's not going to go through the subtle way of doing this race with Masala to hopefully get him in that way. Yeah, see, Mister, that really messed him up. People, I cannot, I wouldn't do that. Okay, you know me. I would not 
promise them chicks that is you ain't gonna get me to lie for you like that it's not that big of an effing deal okay it's just that guess what judah i saw them because they're headed over to the leper colony because they became lepers by having to be in that very disgusting do we get an intermission Ooh, okay jail and it just turned out like that made them become lepers and so they don't want to be around everybody because that's such a highly contagious situation is this the intermission is done already um, how long is this on track gonna be because there's that in Gone with the Wind. Uh, but the intermission was a lot longer in Gone with the Wind. And this on track was very much way shorter than the intermission. I mean, let's not do as long as the... Um, the F was it in the beginning? What is it called in the very beginning? Overture? Anyway... You know what I mean? It's just like, I can't stand people that are like, everything has to be such a secret. Don't tell it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not that big of an effing deal. Just let him know where you guys are. You're alive. Yes, it's something in this day and age they're never going to be able to get over. Um, but at least he can know where they are because we're going to obviously see later on. I mean, he could at least come and look down on They could be very far away from each other and he could at least uh, make sure that they're taken care of and see them. That is stupid as F. And Esther, no matter what, you're a mentorosa. You just lied to him and you, you know what I'm saying? Like... For me, it's more important not to be a liar than, oh, we can't tell the truth, right? Because it's just really not that big of an effing deal. I mean, Judah wouldn't have any choice but to let them stay there in that colony, right? Like, that's the deal about that disease is it's highly contagious and, you know, but it doesn't obviously, I think, take people out right away. Like, it seems like they can live with that stuff for a very long time. Again, that's what I'm saying. Check out on my member site, Nun Story, because that's a part of that movie where she goes to Africa. And like I said, there's this pastor or whatever, and he just takes it upon himself to be living on that leprosy colony with these people. And for years, he manages to not get it. But then all of a sudden, he does. I mean, but he'd been there for like 20 years living with them and then just not being careful enough. He finally caught it. You know what? While this is playing, I'm going to go see if I can close another window in this house to make it darker. <clears throat> that kind of helped actually I <laughs> did I pause the movie no but I did something to the volume oh. Okay, so damn, Judas stormed out though. Hey. What would make him right now, knowing, being told, knowing that his mother and sister are no longer here, what would make him not now be going to go get Masala? I didn't gather that he had changed his mind about doing that so far and all he did was let that fool know that he'd better get this straightened out by tomorrow he was coming back to check right and then otherwise if not if he didn't have news for judah about where they were didn't he basically make masala very aware that his days were numbered and it wasn't a threat right what the heck is this
Okay, I'm still tripping about why is Masala associated with the circus? He obviously is still the Tribune. But I guess just to occupy himself, he races in the circus, too. Uh, this is dude. Uh, he's trying to come and lay a bet. You're trying to get a bet going. The limit of what's in his chest right here. Pretty limitless, huh? It's their currency. It's Roman coins. Oh, that's how deep. Why hasn't Masala said anything? Is he interested in this? What's, he, what's his take? I was gonna say, he's not taking note. This dude's writing it down. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. Huh? your little bitches if you just want to keep it <laughs> oh will Masala say 50 to win oh, four. Oh, that's why his, they've always been calling him Ben-Hur. Now he's just also, oh, the Prince of Hur. Is that what he's always been while he was here? Okay, that's, because I was, is, I thought that's where he got adopted. No, but he can be Judah. Look at him. He ain't so sure. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, huh? Oh, he's just writing it down. <laughs> Can you cover it for? He don't, he don't have all of that huh? as his little tribute self. <clears throat> that four to win, do do. <laughs> Oh, he had his own pen. Oh, it's his little signet has. Okay, so Judah decided to just do the race. He's not going to speak to Masala. This is all the way back at this dude's place. Huh? This is where Judah met him. But they're not in Judea. Does he talk to them too? Individually, by name.
I have to go nine times. And like the pie. Then he's a slow one. Uh, he's like shorter than the other ones too. Huh? Yeah, they're okay. He's in his own spot. What difference does that make now? They just had to say that we're in the Pontius Pilate time, but so at first when Judah was trying to come back and his adopted dad was like, don't go yet because Pontius Pilate's about to become the new governor anyway, would that mean that homeboy wasn't still going to be the tribune underneath Pontius Pilate? Like Pontius Pilate gets to decide who his own tribune is and he'd probably be kicking um, full out. What is Masala's future, aside from this race? Um, because there's a new governor. Okay, like, why I've been tripping about this circus thing is because it's like, is he, um, moonlighting? Do you know what I mean? Like, does he need extra money? Why the F... Okay. It's probably not demeaning at all huh, that Masala has been doing this. It shows his prowess. It gives him esteem, huh? Is this the way he looks throughout this race? I don't recall it. When I was looking up the stats, I forgot to look up even between days here. Who is the dude that wins the Best Supporting Actor? Griffith, whoever that is. Where's my phone? Because I'm just trying to understand if that's the guy that's playing Masala. <sighs> okay, so there's like more people in this race than just these two fools, right? Just looking up the cat. Yeah, see, Stephen Boyd is Masala. And Jack Hawkins was that English dude. Oh, okay. The Arab man is Griffith. He's the one that wins the Best Supporting Actor. They're going to go through here, this way. Oh, is this Masala coming all late? Is that, this is him? Making an entrance. Why does, why would they want those capes and shit wrapped around them too? They gotta be going against the wind and stuff. They wouldn't, does that make them aerodynamic? Yeah, he's jacked up his wheels, huh? They can do that? People can just come in all um, illegal like this, however they want to? That's what he was just getting finished on his little chariot. 
right, right, right. I, I think like that's exactly the words to um, go along with the fact that you just pointed that out to him, homeboy. It's, it's probably real good. Anyway, suppose, what did they say? Like, there was some stat about this. It's like, I don't know, just one of the best action sequences in all film history. Let's take a look at the scale of what they've created here. It's pretty high. Um, it's pretty tall. This isn't the Colosseum, though, in Rome. Um, this is whatever they're doing. Their little territory. Okay, so there's a lot of people in this race besides them. Okay, you know what? Now I need to adjust my picture. I don't like how dark it is. Yeah, I got it on vivid now. Is this the governor? Oh, it's Pontius Pilate. <clears throat> Look at what the horses have on. That's so beautiful. <clears throat> well that's crazy um trying to take the turn uh, like they obviously couldn't really do it very well in the straight line the way they're coming through right now where's my hand right but I mean, it's just gonna, once they take off, it'll be about who's ever in, uh, right? It's like as they're turning, the one on the very inside is having to hold his horses back. Like, it just seems like as the race would be taking off, you would not want to have to be all tight on the inside like that. Even if you had nobody else around you, you'd want to take that turn a little bit less tight than that. Well, do they, how many times are they going to go around this thing slow? Oh, they're just letting everybody in the Coliseum see them. Huh? That's what this is for. This is such weird formation they're doing. Look at this. These are beautifully trained horses, too. My grandpa just used to always point out to me, he and I used to watch a lot of rodeo stuff, and like the, when they're doing the cow, tying up the cows, my grandpa would always point out, like, look at how smart the horse is, he's keeping the rope really tight, like, but the horse just knows that, right, like, he's trained, he's smart enough, he knows, you know, not to let there be any slack in the rope. While the dudes hopped off of the horse and scooping up the little calf, whatever, calf roping or whatever that event is. Okay, they're taking that shit off because I would, what the F would they want all of that heavy stuff on? It was just for prancing through the Coliseum. Okay, they were not race ready. Why are they all freaking out? Once this thing takes off, right, it'd be like every person for themselves to just try and get out in the lead, and I'd be right in, in the middle of that. They don't stay in their lane, do they? Is anybody, 
gonna clap here? I mean, well, they don't agree to that, being a part of Rome. Is there gonna be somebody from Africa? Do we got a brother? Town, yeah, hero. Judah. Oh, they're the only ones doing it. <laughs> yeah, full. Know where you are. I thought he just said that the race could begin. Now it is. How do they get started? Oh, he took. Why did Judah take off his helmet? I could see him maybe keeping that on. False start. Yeah, they have to pull back. Huh? Okay, now I'm saying, people don't have to stay in their lane, right? No, right? Like, you're just trying to get the most strategic, advantageous position. So, of course, Tikka Masala is just horrific to his horses. He's got, like, an extra special whip. And he's just going to constantly be getting after him, right? He doesn't run them with love. They, he is not a part of their family. Because Judah don't even have a weapon. He just, he wrapped it all around him real tight. And... So these horses must actually be racing, people, right? Like, that's what makes this so cool to see. Yeah, they are. And nine times around. I mean, in some ways, I don't know, just there when it was Masala, did it kind of look like green screen behind him? But a lot of this has to be... Oh, well, what the F? Okay, they were getting somebody out of <laughs> danger. This is William Wyler. Uh, you can kind of, um, William Wyler must have had a thing about filming horses because I was thinking, um, of big country. Oh, kind of as they were getting started like that, um, that scene in the very beginning when the horses take off and Gregory Peck's trying to grab them in. I, I don't hit them so. It's loud. Uh, uh, and see, so this fool's little razor blade is all that's making his competition. Oh, be out of the match. Damn. Oh, don't get. He, oh, my. That was horrific. Oh, that's Judah kind of coming up on him. Um, Judah ain't really worried about getting out in the lead right now because uh, they have nine times to go around. Just like go around that many times uh, without getting knocked out first. Oh, here he comes. He ain't waiting. Okay. That's cool. Oh my gosh. This is beautiful. Yeah, I don't get next to him though, Judah. 
in a way, like, why are you, um, yeah, like, don't get too close to that fall. I don't know why, um, that went John Wayne movie, Rio Grande, that is doing so good on the channel. But in that movie, they're training to be little, I think, cavalry soldiers. And they, I feel like they have four horses, huh? And they ride them, but they jump on the back of the horse. They get on two of the horses in the middle, just standing on their backs, and they're racing all four of them, and they're jumping over shit. They're not quite doing as much as they do in Rio Grande, people. You, that movie's very well watched. The watch along is very well watched. Ooh, 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 okay. It is so loud. Wow, the sound is really cool. The sound editing needed to win the Oscar, huh? Why? It looked like he's, like, holding his horses back. Mm. Oh, well, there's two more out of it. Okay, there's still a lot of them in it. I thought of what that... I keep calling this little tikka masala. It's a mango chutney. <laughs> that goes good with that. Okay, they made it, but how? They're all... Well, people, get out of the way that are on this track. You know what I mean? Like, don't lose your life. At some point, you have to have a little bit of responsibility for your own life. Oh, my gosh, that's been her? Oh, my gosh! Wow! Now what? Open them up now? Just get them running out on the lead now. They can go in the front for the rest of the way. Go, Judah, go. Mm. He can't really get away from him. But he should try a little better to do that. Damn, Judah, like, he should be trying to get his horses on the other side of this full. I mean, it's not that it, he doesn't have this shit on both sides of his wagon, but his chariot. Okay, is Judah running on, like, one wheel now? Didn't Wasn't that his chariot that just got all chopped up? Okay, ooh, the home stretch, the home stretch. Yes! Judah literally did not have a wheel, right? I grab it from him, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Oh no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Judah, let it go, yeah. I, I, I. Oh. Oh, it beats like that sometimes. Oh, damn. Does he still have like two more times to go around the thing? Wow, full 
karma, you know. That's it. He's bloody from head to toe. Um. He's coming right up to him right away. Not really, huh? How ghetto these people are. <laughs> so is he gonna he's just taking a victory lap? Oh is he coming to talk shit to punch his pet? What is he coming up here for? He doesn't need to do this, right? Permit us to worship. Wow. Oh. That's what he had to come for. his adopted dad. Does a Pontius pilot need to keep in mind that um, Judah has been adopted by that dude in Rome? Who's coming to visit this dude? Oh, he's making people wait for Judah. Did he lock her for what? They gotta amputate something? Well, why is Judah taking a really long time to come down here? He's been sent for. He got this dude's message. Oh, there he is. That's a nasty job that that man had, laying over his bloody body like that. Oh, is he still taking his time to roll through her? Do you have any condolences to offer, Judah? What's up? No, I guess this was his intent and design. Is he just maybe taking it back? a little bit.
Well, you look like the embodiment of hate right now. Oh, is he taking that to the grave? Okay, get to work on this man, though. Oh, okay. What, what else, Masala? Like, we were brothers. What goes on? Or is it just holding his breath? Well, okay, Judah got his answer. Okay, I mean, Judah just took his time to get down here, but he did not um, get a towel, he did not refresh, he did not pat. This, what is, this is somebody that just did nine laps around that thing. Okay, I mean, it's done, right? Not quite the way that he envisioned from the very beginning. For the longest part of that race, they were really just about the race and trying to win the race. Like, Judah was not going to do anything malicious. Like, that fool had his little tricked out chariot and shit. Like, Ju Judah was not going to get the satisfaction of ending him from the race just for the way that he was going about the race. You know, I don't feel like... It's a bit much if he's trying to take on like a whole bunch of feeling of responsibility for what happened to him. <clears throat> Is this him right there? Yeah, okay. That's interesting. Is this part of like the government's responsibility is to deliver this food here? This is where um, Julie and Press were going to at the end of. They went to Lazarus Island at the end of. Um, what's the movie? Jezebel. We didn't see it, but this is where they were coming to. Oh, he's coming. <clears throat> Can this person speak? Okay, Judah, so yeah, he's, he doesn't really want to talk to you anymore. Right, and you realize like the definitely social distancing that you need to be doing. Mm. Oh, 
Oh, so she comes, and she comes down. Is he mad at her? Oh, she's still going to ask him to leave her because they don't want to see him. You know what I'm saying, people? Like, it obviously has been something that has severely bothered me throughout this movie. We are in, um, it is not BC times, but it's way the F back in time. And we are in a region in the world, and these different accents should not be in place yet. It's a, it's a fail on this. This, ch I mean, why is she the only person that speaks like this? Her, her father has no hint of this accent. <clears throat> well, Judah, I mean, you could peek, right? I mean, he's hiding hard. <laughs> he's not moving. He's got, like, three feet of rock that he's good. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Well, you can move and peek. <clears throat> oh, now he's got his arm around the edge of it. This is unnecessary tragedy, I'm just saying. I mean, okay, I guess, you know, Esther threw it down. You gotta love them the way they need to be loved, so they gotta be able to not be looked at. Um, I don't know, are they trying to make it very shallow and petty that because they're women, it's like extra important that they not be seen having lost their looks? They're family. And... They have been unnecessarily separated, but everybody has survived. Yeah, well, I mean, you could have a little bit. Why? Well, Judah, um... That's what I'm saying, like, if you're not gonna do that, had to come here. There's no alternative. <clears throat> I remember dude being able to hold Judah down. Um, the, I, people, this, it's team too much. It's team too much tragedy, melodrama, martyrdom, unnecessariness. They're there, they need to stay there, and Judah could have said hello to them over the rock, and they could have had a conversation, and everybody could feel better about their circumstances that, yes, we got tragically separated, and everybody has survived, though. And here we all are, able to be reunited, and in the time that we have left, you know, let's make it a regular, I mean, Judah could be coming out here daily, but, oh no. How can he see them anyway? 
As they were just standing there talking to Esther, what did we see of them? Well, I was going to say, does this old dude see Judah? Judah won't go. Is he all bitter? Esther's gonna go? Hmm. But he has to go meet with Pontius Pilate. He told him to come. <clears throat> yeah, he's just bitter. So he spoke to the exact moment when he has had the blessing to have already been in the presence of, but he won't let it happen again right now. Is this Esther that we see standing up? <clears throat> That's interesting. You know what just kind of came through to me? That look on Esther's face. I can see the way in this time, as this was happening, that some could be um, non-believers because of the fact he was in the form of a man, right? And you don't want to give a man like that much credit and belief and you know some people it's like what's kind of what naturally how do you resonate on trusting people right probably if you think people can tend to really be evil and bad and stuff that could contribute to a non-belief stuff always happening in the background for Judah like he's now gotten his citizenship he's got his passport he didn't need to fill out his application take a picture go through the process Oh, here. His dad. Oh. 
Oh, so he needs to go back to Rome in order to take advantage of all of this stuff. Oh, yeah, because otherwise his name is Young Arius. Okay. And now we're enemies. He's been rubbing. Oh, so give it back then, Drew. Will he do it? Is he gonna take it? Pontius Pilate can't be going back to Rome. He's the governor. Is he just coming to sit on this little throne in this empty room right there? By himself? You have my wit. Leave Judea, you have my whatever. What's she all excited about? But she thought he was going back to Rome. Does he want anything to do with her? Yeah, he no, he does not really want anything to do with her. She's not in his confidence anymore, then. Oh. Oh, so he's going to stir up the people to rebel.
as great a wet as and that's not who he is. I mean. a girl, huh? She's having a real hard life. I mean, she just don't ever have that look off of her face. He said that he could barely draw a breath without her being in his arms. What's happened between them? We just, we've glossed over that. We've skipped over that part. Is this Esther? This, you know what, again, the stupidity of this. So, okay, it's Esther, and here they come, and here's Judah, too. Just gonna let it be known that he's here. She got more sick. Esther, why are you coming so close? Who were the steps that we heard? Judah, okay. Who were the steps? You know what I meant. So, okay, to make this contact, you're just going to get all up on her and stuff, too? I mean, if you're doing it, you should have done it from jump. <clears throat> I mean, it's cool that you want to give them the good word and stuff, but this is not a situation where it's like, oh, okay, they're not going to possibly really have a good likelihood ch chance of getting sick. Okay, so he's just gonna go get his sister now, too. I mean, tell him where she is at least a little bit, you know what I mean? 
Because it's just on like Donkey Kong right now, you know what I mean? It's just, are you going to get it or not? But see, is then I'll, then he don't care. Like, it's this is worth it to him, you know? Then don't tell him, don't tell him. Well, okay, you know what I'm saying? Because it was not a problem. He could have been talking to them from the rock. And he don't give a fuck, and he coming up. And he's going to go pick up his sister. He's going to come carrying her. His mom could have told him exactly what little spot to come to. Or, you know, let him. Um, Trump has to be picking people up like they're real feather light, huh? Do they show him stand up with her right now? You know what I'm saying? This is, unless there is going to be a healing, um, all four of them have this now. Okay. Oh, and they, you know what I'm, I don't want to be petty like this, but how Esther was saying about she'll just go get them and take them to see Jesus. Um, They're not really supposed to be just coming into this town. And they know that. And that's the reason why they were where they were. You know what I mean? It's not just being mean. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it is a highly contagious. It's not about just like, oh, you look scary or whatever. It's a highly contagious disease, people. Incurable back in this day. And so... I mean, there's just protocols. I mean, it's fine to have maybe taken them right around the corner from where they were at first when he was on the mountain giving a sermon. Why did Pontius Pilate just wash his hands? Did he have blood on his hands? I don't know all the details of this story. Um, the significance of them showing him washing his hands just there, I, I seriously don't know all the details. But there must have been something that he just did to get his hands bloodied that he was washing off. Because I saw Jesus' back looked like his robe was torn Lep 
peppers, dude, right? I mean, it's just facts, people. It's You don't have to feel like you have a hard heart, you're a mean person or anything. It's facts. Is this Judah's hand that we see right here? Okay. Just slowly, the reason why I'm kind of just like, what has already happened as far as blood and stuff? Um, you can see, though, Jesus is carrying his cross, so he's obviously not nailed to it yet. So, but they've obviously hurt him already anyway. I mean, does so far as to show Judah helping Well, I mean, Esther um, might need to be staying with them on the Pharrells. Okay, Judah's just keeping up. People, why do they, this is not a part of the story, right? I mean, so this is just the highly fictionalized, taking a lot of liberties. My neighbors are being extra loud. I just keep hearing <laughs> noises. Right? See, this was... Um,
The sky has been getting darker, huh? We can kind of notice that. Where is this light coming from? Because it had been getting darker. Uh, what is Esther's deal? Does she have nothing to live for? I mean, she absolutely had no knowledge that something like this was happening. Despite her being all hugged up on these two ladies right now. Like, she should just honestly have no plans of leaving her.
Is this the end or are we going to see Ben Hur again? Okay, they didn't end it right there. Is this house still all run down? <clears throat> okay, he's just coming straight from it himself, right? Is he healed now himself in his heart? His family is really important to him because you this goes back four hours ago, I was saying whatever became of Judah's father. So for, you know, a long time before all of this stuff happened to them, it was just him and his mom and his sister. Like, that would be the driving force for his quest that he's been on. Thank goodness his sister didn't end up with Masala. Like and subscribe. We will see you guys next weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.